Blog post, March 24th, 2017. Teaching. While I claim no right to control, manage, or command any other person, I do claim the right to teach. Like any other person who believes in something greater than themselves, we all have the right to teach what is important to us and have others consider. In the history of mankind, there are only two documented successes of establishing a city of peace that was visited by God. In the first, Enoch preached and taught. He assumed only the role of a teacher. People listened, repented, and were able to live in peace with one another. They had one heart and one mind. There were no poor among them. Moses 7, 18-19 Melchizedek also preached and taught. His message was for the people to repent. Alma 13, 17-18 Although called a Prince of Peace and the King of Salem, Joseph Smith explained, these terms were not because he had kingly rule over any group, but it signifies King of Peace or Righteousness, and not any country or nation. Words of Joseph Smith, page 246. When God reveals his mind to me, I have every right to teach and preach repentance and urge people to return to God. There are no active covenant people who can fulfill the prophecies on earth today. There is nothing special about any people yet, but the potential to lay claim on blessings and establish a covenant exists. In 1832, the incipient restoration movement Joseph Smith was laboring to establish was condemned by the Lord. The nascent Mormonite movement, as it was then called, was rebuked by the Lord. He told them their minds were darkened because they treated lightly what had been given to them. They were plagued with unbelief. He condemned them and warned they would remain under his condemnation until they repented and not only said, but did what the Book of Mormon and other commandments directed them to do. D&C 84, 54-57 Among other things, they were required to, quote, bring forth fruit, meat for their father's kingdom, end quote. D&C 84, verse 58 By 1841, the earlier condemnation had not been cured. The Lord threatened them again, warning they would be, quote, rejected as a church with your dead, end quote. D&C 124, verse 32. He gave a sign to them. If they repented, he would come to their planned but unbuilt temple and restore the fullness which they had lost. D&C 124, verse 28. He would not let anyone move them out of their place, verse 45. But if they would not obey him, then they would, quote, by your own works brings cursings, wrath, indignation, and judgments, end quote, upon themselves, verse 48. They failed to do as he commanded. They were moved out of their place. They failed to receive the fullness from him. They suffered Wintertime expulsion, hunger, famine, pestilence, and the judgments of God upon them. They did not receive the covenant because they were unwilling to accept what was offered by the Lord. He was willing to gather them as a hen gathers her chicks under her wing for protection, but they were not interested. When the Lord determined to renew his work, and allow another people the opportunity to receive a covenant from him, he spoke to me from heaven and provided instruction. Faithful to those instructions, I have labored for years to prepare the minds and hearts of any who wish to receive what is offered by a kind and loving God. The Book of Mormon is intended to be received as a covenant. The covenant must first be delivered to and accepted by the Gentiles in order for the Gentiles to be numbered among the remnant of God's people. 3 Nephi 21, 22. 
the Gentiles must have a covenant, or they cannot assist in any way to establish the new Jerusalem. 3 Nephi 21 verse 23. It will be former Gentiles who are called Ephraim once restored, to whom all other tribes must come to receive their part in the covenant. D&C 133 verses 30 through 34. This will happen once the Gentiles have been given the land as their land of promise, an inheritance from God given only to a covenant people. 3 Nephi chapter 21 verse 22. At present, the Gentiles have been condemned and rejected by the Lord. Therefore, some few must repent and return. In making an offer to establish a covenant, no one is obligated to accept his offer. The presumption is that Gentiles will refuse, as they have done for many generations. Any Gentile who does not want to obtain the covenant merely needs to refrain from accepting the offer, and they remain exactly as they are now. They do not need to rejoice in the offered gift, nor to even receive it. D&C 88 verse 33. But if even a tiny few Gentiles are willing to accept the covenant, God will receive them and accomplish his work through them. It was always the Lord's expectation that few would receive it and walk in a straight and narrow path. Almost all others will reject it and walk in a broad enough path to accommodate every other false religious idea, false promise, incomplete and damning path that competes with the Lord's invitation to come to him. The work of getting an accurate restatement of what the Lord once offered and what he now offers and instructs has been underway for more than a year and a half. It has resulted in a preliminary draft of new scriptures now available for anyone to review and comment on as a draft. When the wise input has been gathered and the text completed to the best of our, ab our present ability, it will be prayerfully submitted to the Lord for his approval. He has taken an active role in the project already, providing several additions of importance to him. They have been added. Whatever man may think of that project, before it is proposed for an acceptance as a covenant, it will need to be approved and accepted by the Lord. I expect he will do so, because he has already accompanied the work thus far undertaken. When a conference in Boise takes place this coming September, the completed project will be offered for acceptance. There will be many who will not want it. They needn't do anything. But even if a few will accept it, those who do will become, at that time, part of the covenant people of God, numbered with the remnant, and entitled to inherit this as their land. In turn, God will protect them. If they abide the covenant, he will establish a new Jerusalem, a land of peace, a city of refuge. His glory and terror will be there, and the wicked will not come unto it. To it will be gathered from every one of the tribes of Israel, and they will be the only people who are not at war with one another as the final chapter of the world unfolds. DNC chapter 45 verses 65 through 71. The Spirit of God will watch over his covenant people while it withdraws from the rest of the world. In the coming darkness, they will become progressively more warlike and violent until the earth is filled with bloodshed. If there are any others who are willing to do so, I intend to join them in accepting the covenant in September. That will allow me to address Christian audiences in California, Texas, and Atlanta. As a covenant holder, offering to them the benefit of accepting what the Lord offers to everyone freely. Any others who accept the covenant can do likewise. No one is required to accept the Lord's invitation, but... 
If accepted, the covenant needs to be kept. No one other than the Lord will enforce the covenant, but he has at his disposal lightning, pestilence, famine, and earthquakes. D&C chapter 43 verse 25. He has warned of a coming time when there is burning, desolation, and lamentation. D&C 112 verse 24. He has always planned to have a covenant people survive with his protection. Anyone who objects to this is free to continue on without accepting God's offer. They are free to attempt to persuade others to also reject the covenant and remain alone without God's protection in the coming difficulties. But their opposition cannot prevent it from happening for others who choose to accept the Lord's offer to gather them as a hen gathers her chicks. But, if accepted, the covenant needs to be kept. No one other than the Lord will enforce the covenant, but he has at his disposal lightning, pestilence, famine, and earthquakes. D&C chapter 43 verse 25. He has warned of a coming time when there is burning, desolation, and lamentation. D&C 112 verse 24. He has always planned to have a covenant people survive with his protection. Anyone who objects to this is free to continue on without accepting God's offer. They are free to attempt to persuade others to also reject the covenant and remain alone without God's protection in the coming difficulties. But their opposition cannot prevent it from happening for others who choose to accept the Lord's offer to gather them as a hen gathers her chicks. Them as a hen gathers her chicks.